Hey guys, welcome back to More Modern. Today we'll be playing Loam Pox, which is an attrition style deck that aims to outvalue your opponent in the long game and win through the engine of Life from the Loam. Life from the, Lo Life from the Loam reads return up to three cards from your three land cards from your graveyard to your hand. Dredge three. So dredge, obviously an incredibly powerful mechanic, um, and allows you to utilize your graveyard uh, in a number of different ways. Now when you pair this with smallpox, um, smallpox on turn two can be incredibly devastating uh, on the play. When you're on the play, smallpox is amazing against you know a turn one mana dork or something like that, um, and you just blank a land and a dork or um, you know even turn one like goblin guide etc. So and on the draw, you know killing a tarmogoyf and a land is not that bad. So smallpox is an incredibly uh, potent card because it hits your opponent in four different avenues. It makes them lose a life. It makes them discard a card, they have to sacrifice a creature and sacrifice a land. So they're losing out on four different kinds of resources. And since you are able to recur at least one of those resources, um, your aim is to get ahead with that card. So aside from that, you have Inquisitions. Um, this is a pretty key staple of, of modern, so there shouldn't be too much explanation there. Flame Jabs, which pair really well with your Life from the Loam. So, um, you can use this to kill smaller creatures or to do start dealing three damage a turn in the late game. Um, you have Faithless Lootings, which are super powerful and synergistic in a graveyard-focused deck, um, and Collective Brutalities, which allow you to um, pitch certain things that you're able to get back, which we can talk about a little bit more uh, as we get into the deck. In terms of your removal, you have Abrupt Decay, um, Lightning Axe, which again allows you to pitch things that you're going to be able to get back, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, terminates, and finally Nameless Inversion. Nameless Inversion seems like a weird inclusion, but since we've been talking about pitching things, um, let's just scroll up. We have Hakan, Stromgald Scourge, and he's a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three that can only be cast from your graveyard. As long as he is in play, you can cast Night Cards from your graveyard, which Nameless Inversion happens to be a Night Card because it's every creature type at all times. So, um, pairing these two together, allows you to basically have an infinite amount of removal, which is incredibly useful. Um, and then you have two Golgari Bronze Scales, which are also fine to be pitched. Um, these guys are, one, they're additional dredgers to help you find your loams if you don't have one already. And two, they help to gain you life to combat aggro and to um, offset the life loss that is sometimes occurs with the last clause of the Stromgold Scourge, which says when he is put into graveyard from play, you lose two life. Finally, we have Blood Gas. These are obviously uh, incredibly powerful with, um, well, one, life from the loam, and two, with Faithless Looting. Um, we've already seen a lot of decks utilize this card in Modern, and it continues to be a powerhouse in graveyard-focused decks. And finally. Um, in terms of our non-lands, we have Seismic Assault. <clears throat> now this, this card is um, just a, an amazing attrition-based card. Um, it allows us to kill our opponent's creatures, um, shoot down their planeswalkers, and eventually kill them um, with six damage a turn or more, depending on how many loams you can get in your hand. Um, and that's a pretty good clock whenever they can't really resolve any major threats that are keeping you down. Um, so finally we get to our lands. Um, most of this is going to look pretty straightforward. You know, you have one, two, you have, I think, of five shocks, three, four, five, yeah. Five shocks, um, six fetches, and then one of each basic. Uh, and then the weird ones are going to be quicksand, which um, is one of my favorite personal inclusions that I put to this deck. Um, it allows you to kill smaller creatures. Um, and stay ahead against aggro because you can loam it back uh, over and over again. Um, Bajuka Bog, which we can basically use over and over again with our Ghost Quarters, which allows us to obviously keep our opponent's graveyards empty if that matters. Um, Urborg isn't that odd of an inclusion, but it just helps a little bit with um, the Graven Cairns. Basically, it allows them just to tap for black as opposed to. Um, forcing me to pay whatever in, and then, um, you know, sometimes it makes it hard for 
getting green mana or whatever. But the reason these guys are here is so I can cast my smallpox, which is uh, not always easy to cast, and also cast my seismic assault because we have a lot of, you know, double black and triple red in this deck is challenging. So we use the filter lands to help us achieve that. Um, so finally, we get to go into the sideboard. Uh, I'll start with the entry grudges. Angry Grudge, uh, because it has flashback naturally, is um, a very powerful card in a graveyard synergistic type deck. Um, paired alongside Nature's Claim, there's a, um, I think it's called Ray of Revelation. Um, so there is another flashback card that destroys target enchantment, but the issue is this white mana cost. Um, and I've done a few, I, I tested one with Lingering Souls, and the white mana just makes the mana base a little bit too stressful on your life total because we don't have the uh, the original duels in this format. So because of that, um, go away, right? Uh, I want to there. Okay. Um, so because of that, we're running Nature's Claim, which does effectively the same thing. It just can't be cast in the graveyard. But it allows us to destroy a target artifact or enchantment, which means we can bring in more matchups. Um, because we don't care that much about our opponent's life total, uh, since we're trying to play a long game anyway, we're eventually going to kill them. So, um, we run Nature's Claims, and they've, they've been pretty good so far. Memory's Journey is another, uh, inclusion that I've seen, um, and it basically comes in when you're expecting spell bombs or relics, um, things that gonna, that they're going to exile your graveyard, um, or like surgical extractions are going to exile your graveyard when you have key cards, or like they're going to exile key cards from your graveyard. And so you shuffle them in response to either nullify the target of um, the surgical extraction, or just to blank a relic, or the important parts of what a relic could exile. Um, alternatively, you can use it aggressively against things like Search for Ascanta, or Snapcaster Mage, etc. So when you're expecting an opposing graveyard deck or an opposing value deck that's going to try to fight you with its own graveyard, Memory's Journey can come in so that you can um, oppose that a little bit more strongly. Um, Golgari Brown Scales, these come in in aggressive matchups. You basically just board out your blood ghasts. Um, and they, the reason being is because your blood ghasts can't block, which stinks. So instead you bring something in that's going to both gain you life and block indefinitely until you can win the game, um, and that's pretty potent. Um, Nihil Spell Bombs, again, this is something else for graveyard decks. Um, this is pretty straightforward, uh, but it's better than your other options, which are basically um, Leyline, because the other options are going to exile your own graveyard. So this one I like a lot. It's mana efficient. It doesn't require me to have, you know, an incredible amount of luck in the early game. Um, and it allows me to only target my opponent as opposed to my graveyard. So I like spell bombs a lot, and it draws you a card, which is also nice. Uh, Bantu's Last Reckoning. Again, this is going to come again, uh, in against creature-based aggro or decks where they have, like, bigger threats, like uh, Red-Green Eldrazi, for instance, or something like that. So. Um, I like Reckoning a lot because it's 3 mana, which means that you can kill the creatures a little bit earlier, which is important in a very aggressive format, and when our deck is very slow, we want to preserve our health total. Uh, Maelstrom Pulse is a very versatile card, and so far has proven to be worth the $30 that it's worth in paper. Um, you know, it kills basically anything, and it, sometimes it kills more than one thing, so um, it makes your opponent think twice about casting that second ensnaring bridge. Um, it uh, and it allows you to kill things like oh you have two mantis riders out and they kill both of those um, so it's a, it's a very flexible card that does a lot of things and I I like that a lot. Finally, Raven's Crime. These come in in your grindier matchups um, because you don't want your opponent to have a hand in those matchups. And so if your opponent doesn't have things that can interact with your stuff, um, you get ahead and you can you definitely like you end up probably sideboarding out flame jabs for this, like a flame jab and like something else in those grindier matchups so that you can um, so you can stay ahead of your opponent in terms of cards and, and attrition. So with that, let's head into the matches and I'll talk. Uh, this hand looks great. We have uh, Life in the Loams plus Seismic Assault. So this looks like a great keep. 
Uh, there's no interaction aside from the seismic assault, but that aside, this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play my bloodstained mire pass. We're probably just gonna fetch a um, blood crypt here, and then uh, oh, okay. So it looks like we're not doing what we want to do here. To find removal for that. That's really annoying. Who plays turn one relic in this format? <sighs> this is some sort of like Eldrazi and taxes, probably. The only thing I could think of that would do that. Yep, Eldrazi and taxes. All right. Okay, two of them. Sure. Um, do we even want to play this out? Like. I don't feel like there's a point. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I guess we're just playing Blood Gast here, passing. Realistically, I could have just conceded, and it would have been fine. Um, maybe he'll crack his relics just to draw a card, or like maybe just crack one of them. That would be nice. Um, I don't really want to play this quicksand because it might give away what I want. Uh, let's go ahead and faithful saluting. Those aren't particularly helpful. Um, hmm. Yeah, because this is also going to give away what I'm playing. Maybe we just discard it and see if he'll, like, crack one of his relics. Probably not, though. I just don't have enough, like, I don't have enough things in my graveyard. So he can just go twice up, like, his next turn, do it again sort of thing. So I'm just going to pitch... a quicksand instead. Eh, maybe not. Maybe it's better to just do this. Okay, well. Sure, we'll get rid of those. All right, so a thought sees here. I love opponents who uh, don't recognize when they're ahead. Like, my opponent's like, I haven't drawn anything, but I have two relics out against a uh, graveyard-based deck, so there's no way I can win this. So silly. Sure, you got it, man. We have seven turns to do something. More or less. Um, yeah, just gonna looting. Okay, those were actually good draws. So why don't we pitch? I kind of want to keep the quicksand. It can kill like tide hollow or scutter. Whoa, uh, tide hollow, uh, scutter, right? Tide hollow. I think that's the name of the card. Anyway, it can kill like tide hollows. It can kill thalias. It can kill. Is Wasteland Strangler 3-2? I feel like it is. Uh, I can kill Bobs if he's running those, um, etc., etc. So, I think I'm just going to pitch a Loam and a Foothills. Might be not be ideal against this double Ghost Quarter, though. Eh, whatever. We'll just play it.
I mean, if he goes quarters me, so be it. I, meh. I, I don't think that that's really something that I'm going to play around right now. Oh, I guess I could have Faithful Slutinged and then Life from the Loam, etc., etc. That would have been okay. Um, five. Smasher? Is this just like Eldrazi Eldrazi? Wait. Oh, six. Okay, sure. Uh, good job. You got rid of my small poxes. Here you go. Here's your land. Why wouldn't you do that first? I feel like doing that first would be better for you. Yeah, we didn't quite hit what we wanted there. The smallpox off the top have been way better than the other. That's okay. Sometimes that's just how this deck works. Um, I'm gonna let you see if you can if you think you can race me. I have one on an approximate two turn clock. I guess it's not a cycle. I need just a little bit more, and that complicates things a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I have no way of recurring the smallpox, so we'll get rid of that. And the faithless looting is. Marginally? Well, no, let's keep the Faithless Looting and put the Herb Org in Exile. I don't think we're going to win by trying to Loam at this point. Um, that's not bad. I will take that. Let's see, four, five, six. If we Looting and hit two lands, put them to two... Not bad. I'll take that. Uh, yeah, I think we just discard these two, and then uh, I'm actually going to play a land here so that I can Nameless Inversion the Shambling Vent, and then we'll have four. If we can play this, we can also Ghost Quarter it, but um, maybe that's better. Maybe it's better to Ghost Quarter it. Okay, yeah. Huh. Okay. That's annoying. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. We could... Nope, that doesn't kill it. We would need, uh... We would need to have played the... Quick sand, actually. That would have allowed us no, because we wouldn't need one more mana then. All right, so we have a while before he's dead now. Oblivion Sower is not what I expected. There's been no taxing from this deck. kind of odd. You know, at this point, it's not going to hurt me to pop a relic. Like, I don't have enough to really, uh...
going to get rid of these. I think that the loam is better than the rest of that. If I don't know. If he's smart there, he just pops a relic, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to draw. Did end up being about the same as a loam, but... Um, at this point, I'm looking like I need like a smallpox. And we only have one left. We've used all of our lootings. I mean, I guess we could draw a blood gas, which would be good here. We have a number of good draws, so yeah, I'm not going to try to. Is it nine? So if he fetches one more time, all we have to do is draw one land. It's so close to lethal. Um, it's kind of obnoxious. Um, one, two, three, four, five. We'd still have to throw some stuff at it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is not this is not ideal. This is where this would be great as a blighted fen or something. Still going to take three lands and my nameless inversion to kill it. I don't know. Well, that was something. Um, all right, so what do we want here? Milestone Pulse is good against like the big stuff. Um, my guess is if he's on like Eldrazi, he's gonna have some decent amount of artifacts. Um, these tend to be okay, but I prefer to have these, I think, and Bantus against like an Eldrazi deck. Okay, so what do we want to cut? Um, this guy's he's probably fine to be honest. Like, our threats are fine. Lightning Axe is good. I feel like Inquisitions might be medium, especially on the draw. Um, maybe Nameless Inversion isn't great, but the thing is, like, I can cast it several times. I can get one of these guys in play, cast one, and then cast it again, which is usually pretty good. Um... Brutality probably isn't very good against Eldrazi. Alright, three more cards. Personally, against a path deck, I'm not in love with Blood Gas. So let's like trim like two of those guys. Oh, but then again, against path decks, we're kind of like just weak against like all of our stuff's kind of weak, right? Against path. I feel like Flame Jab is not where we want to be in this matchup. We could do like one gassed out, one abrupt decay out. Abrupt decay is more versatile than Ancient Grudge, though. Um, we try like one less loam. We're on the draw, and we have a Faithless Looting, and a Smallpox, and a Loam. I'm going to keep this. It's risky, but we won game one. Oh, that's... Uh, 
Expedition. That's odd. Um, okay. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, that's great. I wonder if he runs Bajuka Bog. Guess we'll find out. I don't think so. I can't imagine why you'd run Bajuka Bog. Nothing. Right, so what's in here? I just want a normal draw first. I was right. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and get a Overgrown Tomb. Slime of Blood Gas into play. Pass. Sure. You got it, man. Yeah, I think he was just really unfortunate in the last game. Um, didn't draw well. All right, so it's a temple. I didn't think he was on Bajuka Bog, but it was possible given that he's running maps. Like, he could run in the sideboard if he really wanted to. Uh, yeah, sure. Here we go. Take your pick. Probably going to exile Smallpox. My guess, and then uh, I'll kill it with the uh, terminate draw. Might dredge actually. Um, and then just start getting him. But yeah, I think uh, terminate. Okay. Let's see if he wants to trade inversion for my thing. Hmm. Sure. Damage is dealt. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and go life from the loam. Get back my hills and uh, play said foothills bringing back my blood ghasts and I'll just pass uh, leaving up the ancient grudge for whatever nonsense he chooses to play uh, again I'm kind of okay with taking four damage like I'm just not in a particular hurry to uh, to not die here and I have the Golgari brown scale in my grave too sure you got it man and take the smallpox, sure. A pretty obvious smallpox take, I think. Yep. So hopefully, if we top deck something like Bantu's, that'd be great. Bantu's last reckoning would be amazing here. Um, take three, please. That's weird. I don't like that play very much. Uh, okay, so yeah, we're going to fetch. Or let's get a stomping ground. Why not? We'll dredge. We could dredge the brown scale back, actually, but I think this is better at this point in time. It digs deeper, giving us the possibility of getting our bigger guy out. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we've we've discarded two of those so far, which is pretty bad. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and cast my life in the loam like that.
And then I'm going to play a mountain, bringing back my Bloodgast. And I will nameless inversion the Thought Not. Just gonna draw here. Yep, that's fine. And then I think we start Ravens Criming him. I think that's our best path to victory. Whoa, what is that? I mean, I know what it is, but why is that there? <sighs> I mean, he doesn't have enough stuff to, like, make things consistently. I don't, I don't think I like that very much. But, I mean, I guess it's a colorless land that has better features. So it's not, it's not bad. So what are we doing here? Black, white, Eldrazi. This looks like a thought not to, no, it's not. He paid a life. Wasteland Strangler. Okay. Give me this back and you're going to kill one of my things? That's kind of bad. One of my things that's just going to keep coming back? Sure. Uh, let's go ahead and... Not dredge. I think we just don't dredge here. No, dredging is... I think dredging is right. Oh, Jukebug. Oh, another blood guest. Alright, cool. Um, there we go. So, we're going to go ahead and... Let's think. I think I want to fetch... having a basic swamp, and then we'll go these two, loam. Oh, I'm an idiot. I missed my trigger. Wow. Alright, I mean, that's the first time I missed it, but still, I just gotta pay attention. Okay. Um, nope, don't have to do that. Okay, glad we got rid of that, and then we'll just swing. We'll see if he wants to block. Great, I'm cool with that. Now, if he top decks, he could top deck a uh, relic, which would make me really sad. That would make me a sad human being. Um, okay, sure. Let me grab loam. And I think we get to start ghost quartering at this point. Yeah, I think that that's our best line right now. Kill that one off first. Um, this has the potential to like make annoying things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, yeah, and then from here, I'm just gonna wait. We can abrupt decay something on his turn. I'm not gonna do it right now. There's no point. Okay, so I'm just gonna kill your thing now. I think. You got it. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna um I'm gonna faithless first actually. Just gonna draw here and we can pitch a couple of lands. All right, so now we have Smallpox, which will kill basically any creature he puts down. Uh, minus Thought Not Seer. Thought Not Seer will obviously take that. Um, but... Sure. So you get rid of my loams, do you? All right, so we're off that plan now. But it's okay. He's at nine life at this point. I'm not really that worried about it. We can get our... We still have a couple things that we can cast from our graveyard. Um, and yeah, so I think that we're in a pretty good boat at this point. I think I want to dredge. Yeah. Um... I'm just going to go ahead and cast the brown scale, which gives me lethal next turn. I guess I could also just uh, smallpox in, but we can hold that up instead, I think. He knows about the smallpox, so yeah. All right, so we are back with round two. This looks pretty good. Turn two, smallpox, pitching the blood gas. Turn three, play a land, life from the loam. All right, so it looks like we're gonna get thought seized or inquisition. Yeah, thought seized. Okay, so this is probably death shadow. Take what you want. It's either terminator, smallpox. Probably smallpox. Yep. I'll just lead on this topic. Is this just regular jund? It could just be straight jund. Start by attacking for my second main. Um, let's go red, black, and then if we need another color, we can get that on our fetch lands. I think we want to brutality here. Um, I want to pitch two lands, I think. Let's 
go to red land. Brutality pitching this. Uh, I'm going to take the cake, man. Push doesn't bother us too much, and bolt. Uh, we're pretty far out of bolt range, so. I think this is just straight Jund, although it could be um, a Jund shadow deck. Either way, uh, I'm not particularly worried about what it's threatening at the moment. Now, do I want to dredge here with my graveyard? Yeah, I mean, we have good hits because, like, so the reason that I'm playing this build for the uh, Stromgold Scourge is because I can dredge more aggressively here and not worry so much about, oh, am I going to hit my uh, Seismic Assault and be sad? So I'm going to go ahead and dredge. Great. Those are all pretty good. Um, so I'll activate the Graven Parents this way. I'll start with a uh, Faithless Looting. That's great. We'll pitch this. And uh, I think we're just going to end up pitching a Terminate here. Um, go Life from the Loam. Grab three lands. Play the Tomb Tapped. Bring back my Blood Ghast. For two. Oh, I should have I should have played the Overgrown Tomb second main. He can now fatal push my guy, and then I gotta wait for next turn to to swing with it. That was a minor misplay, but um, yeah, you got it. But next turn I get to play my cool guy, Hathen Stromgold Scourge, and um, Nameless Inversion his land. Like I can, okay. That's aggressive, and I don't, I just don't know if it's going to, I mean, maybe, depending on what he's got in his hand, but, it's, all right, you got it, man. Okay, so we're going to draw. Uh, do I want to dredge here? I don't really need to, I have stuff, we're good. So... Play my land for turn. It's gonna bring my bring back my blood guest. I'll go ahead and cast this scourge man. Three for two. I can't actually kill his land with nameless inversion, so I'm actually just gonna cast my uh nah. I'll just wait. This is fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Raging Ravine is a clock, but it's slower than the clock I'm presenting, so I don't care that much. I mean, so if he kills the Stronghold Scourge, then I'm in a little bit of trouble. But I can always just hold up Terminate instead of being an idiot like I was and tapping out. So I have the Terminate for his uh, Ravine. And if I, I could keep dredging, and find a ghost quarter and then just be really fine. Yeah, I think I should just keep dredging and try to find a ghost quarter. Because ghost quarter is just amazing here. So we're going to dredge. Those are not bad hits. Um, let me go ahead and do this. To get my blood gas back, and we'll swing for lethal.
Okay, this card. Sure. And then two. I'll fetch down to 11. Get my blood gas back. Let's just get uh, an overgrown tomb here. And I'll go ahead and loam, get back my two lands. All right. So that went pretty well. So Jun brings in Nile Spellbomb. They have a lot of like big creatures, so like Maelstrom Pulse seems good. Um, Lightning Axe is pretty good. Nameless Inversion is pretty medium in terms of removal, but I think that it's actually pretty decent in this matchup. I just, um, it's kind of hard to make cuts against Jun because you kind of want the whole thing. Um, Like, the things I think are good are, like, maybe Raven's Crime is decent, but Jund operates on a pretty slim hand anyway. A lot of the time, at least. Not always, but... Um, like, Ancient Grudges kill the Nihil Spellbomb, spell but they're super... Um, super limited in scope. I kind of just like bringing in the Pulse and taking out, like, one other thing, like, maybe Terminate. Although Terminate helps kill his man lands, maybe Abrupt Decay is a little bit worse, because like I don't really care about the Liliana that much, usually. Um, but Abrupt Decays can kill like things that I do care about, like Scavenging use, for instance. Maybe especially just take out Flame Jab. It's kind of unimpressive a lot of the time. Or maybe these guys, because he's got Abrupt Decays. Maybe we take out one of these. It's between, I think it's between Seismic Assault and the Flame Jab, but I think Flame Jab's just the weaker card. Despite the Abrupt Decay weakness of the Seismic Assault. This is pretty good. I mean, we've got Dredge. We have a way of discarding our um, Hakon. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm going to go with Hakon. But, um... Or I'll just say strong gold scourge. We have a way of discarding our scourge. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty good. We have discard on two. And brutality is kind of weak on the play. I mean, on the draw. Um, but yeah, we're just going to... I think we fetch for... A, it doesn't really matter. No, we want a tomb here so we can fetch a basic with our bloodstained mire if we want. Yeah, uh, no, wait, no, that doesn't work. Nice try. Uh, stomping ground. Stomping ground works. Faithless looting. We're going to pitch these guys. Although maybe I should have... Hmm. Kind of tough. Kind of tough to tell. I, did need, I do need double black, but I want to cast this guy. But I have life in the loam to get that double black. So I'm not that worried about it. We're just going to draw. Yeah, we still have value for um, other parts of our hand. I'm going to be aggressive here and get a Blood Crypt and cast Inquisition. Okay. Decay's a good hit. Double um, Blood Braid Elf. So I'm going to bring my graveyard down here. I can stand over here. Double Blood Braid Elf is kind of annoying because they're pretty good. Uh, but yeah. Okay. They're also really aggressive. Like, Blood Braid Elves are, you know, they're able to deal a lot of damage pretty quickly. So um, that's kind of scary and whatnot. Um, let's see. I think we dredge. 
Okay, brown scale's not a bad hit. Actually. Um, we can start... We can start... Um, ghost quartering him if we want. We can kill the... Um, Yeah, we can kill his Blood Braid with Collective Brutality next turn. So if we Ghost Quarter, kill Raging Ravine, Loam, back these lands. And then we have... Uh, because they don't, they usually run like four basics, two fours, two swamps. At least that's the read duke list. They, he could be slightly different, but they usually don't run red sources. So if we strip away all of his red sources, um, we have two catacombs to get now. All right, you got. It. Oh god, that's not that's not ideal. Um, okay, how big is that? It's big. Okay, so we're gonna loam again. This time we have we have to terminate the goif, unfortunately. Um, which means that I don't want to just ghost quarter him here. I'm going to lead with a. I'll play a ghost quarter, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to let him play his turn. Uh, we're going to want to start probably brown scaling here soon. going to choose not to cast that. We're going to take a decent amount of damage here, but we're going to kill the Goyf. Okay, so we don't know anything else that's in his hand at this point. Um, yeah. So we're just going to untap. I think we brown scale. We can't quite play it yet. So instead, what do we do? I think we could just pitch the brown scale and the loam. Yeah, we do all three modes on brutality. Okay, so we'll take uh, Inquisition, I think. Because I don't care about Fatal Push that much. It just doesn't do anything. Um, great. All right, one, two, three. I'm going to five here to grab what I want. I think I want I want a second green source so that I can cast my brown scale. Uh, those aren't particularly useful here anyway, so that's okay, realistically. Um, Just gonna cast it. And I'll play a ghost quarter. He does have a fatal push, so I'm gonna wait to ghost quarter his land. Um, sure.
Blood gas is not bad. We could pick up actually. I'm actually gonna tap this way. I'm not gonna use my uh, ghost quarter this turn. Play a land. Get back my blood gas. Pass. Now we haven't seen any nameless inversions yet, which would be pretty great because I could play the stronghold scourge, and then uh, he hasn't. He hasn't used the Fatal Bush yet, but I, I know it's in hand. It's just too much to keep track of all that stuff. He's got a Fatal Bush in hand. So, um, yeah, we have a clock now. Um, I'm going to dredge a loam here. And uh, I'm going to start by swinging. Then I'll go ahead and cast my life in the loam. Getting back, ghost quarter, bloodstain mire, and a swamp. I was thinking about playing my ghost quarter here, but I don't see any reason to. So I'm just going to play this uh, swamp. I'm going to go ahead and faithless looting. Uh, actually, I think holding up, I think holding up terminate is just better here. We're at six, so. Um, you know, we die to bolt if we can't kill this blood braid. I mean, we would go to eight. Um, I think I want to terminate this. I think that's fine. Maybe it was right to just leave back the brown scale, but, you know, we have basically infinite brown scales unless he exiles them, so I'm just not tremendously worried about that, I guess. Basically, my game plan right now is to, um, what is this? Here. Um, also sure. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my game plan right now is to just kind of outgrind him with the fact that I can recur my creatures indefinitely. Uh, he doesn't have Colgan's Command Plus Bolt, so I can actually fetch this. That's what I was playing around by not fetching initially. So we'll grab a Blood Crypt and uh, untap. I think I want to... I think I want to grab a Brown Scale again. We can wait to Loam for a little bit. And then I will go, we got one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah. So I'm just going to cast two more threats. I'm going to hit Lily. Not because I care about the discard, I don't care about the discard at all. Um, I can play to land this turn, so I'll do that now. Um, and then this turn will dredge our loam back for this upcoming turn. All right, so it's a land. Force me to sack a creature. Sure, you can have my blood ghast. I go ahead and fetch. I'm not. I'm dead to like double bolt, but that would require him to bolt me, and then me not do anything intelligent, like uh, getting back a brown scale or something. Oh. That's alright, I missed it. That's my fault. Well, uh, yeah, we would have had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't think it makes a difference. Um, we're going to loam. Yep, and then, uh, 
I'm going to start cutting him off red sources. He actually runs a mountain, which is not what uh, Reed Duke is on, so that's interesting in and of itself. Uh, we'll go ahead and cast it alone. Play this blood gas back, and then we could have looting here. Um, but yeah, I don't think we need to. I'm going to loam again. We can close out of this for now. Um, all right, so we get there against Jund. All right, so head into round three, and we're on the play. Mm, it's kind of tough, but I think that we're pretty likely to hit what we need to hit. I'm going to keep this. We have three shots at a land, so... And we got there, so great. Yeah, I don't, like, want to smallpox next turn. It, uh, we're going to abrupt decay that. And the reason we do that is because we're an attrition-based deck, so like we want to smallpox next turn. Um, yep, yeah, that's... I think we just sack this land, uh, discard, probably looting... <clears throat> now, if there's another Thalia, it would be kind of sad. Okay, that's allowed. I don't really care about that. So now, though, we need to life in the loam. We're going to loam back. Three lands, and then we can go... Play a tap line and pass. All right, Blade Splicer. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, you got it, man. So we want to probably Brutality and Smallpox next turn. Uh, I think the best way to do it would be... I don't think... I think we just want a regular draw here. That's a pretty good draw. That's a really good draw, actually. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and fetch here. Uh, let's see. 
we would prefer to have a red source because we have the flame jab, but I just think that we got to get a basic swamp here. Oh, I guess we could just get a basic mountain. And then, ca no, we can't. We can't do that. Because we need three black to do what we want to do here. It's got to be a basic swamp. Um, okay, so we want to go collective brutality, pitch a land so we can kill this and gain a life. And then we want to go smallpox. Liquid Wisp, so he discarded. Okay, great. And then, so now we, we don't really have a good way of killing the Smuggler's Copter. Um, so that's the only thing we really got to worry about. But, um, no. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, one, two, three, sure. Uh, let's see, what can we do here that makes sense? I think we do we loam I think I feel like we loam here and then uh Oh yeah, we we're going to try to dig to nameless inversion. That's how we're going to kill the copter. So this is in our hands. We're going to go ahead and do this. Life from the loam, get back three lands. Uh and then we'll just make it as hard as we can for our opponent to activate the smuggler's copter. <clears throat> now, in the sideboard, we're expecting to play against Rest in Peace, which is going to kind of suck. But we'll, like... Be able to bring in grudges for copter and stuff like that. Oh, now. Ow, now. Um, that's kind of fine, though. We can kill that pretty easily. <laughs> okay. So, draw. Going to dredge again. Not getting any closer. <laughs> Um, grabbing three lands. Uh, I think we pretty much just want to play this guy at this point. We also haven't found any pressure, which kind of stinks. Um, pitching that. That's fine. So we gotta hit it now. Yeah, we really gotta hit that card now. We expect to uh, potentially even win this match. So loam. Didn't get there. Yeah, we don't have enough mana to do what we want to do, unless he just whiffs on another creature, and we can kill this here. Uh, man. What we could do... Much... Okay, so if we do... Loam... And then we'll end them this way, and then cast our. 
No, we can't cast our Haka this turn, realistically. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, loam this, this, and this. Not that. I guess this guy. We also haven't hit like a Golgari Brown scale, which would help. Um, it wouldn't save us, but it would like potentially help out a little bit. Uh, flame Jab pitching this one and this one. And then I think we just bog him. Let's hope that he that he would have played it if it were a land. Maybe it's an Aether Vial. Like, Aether Vial land is what's in his hand right now. That'd be perfect. Okay. Well, sure. Yeah, if this were a Cabal Pit, we could maybe stop that, but no. Yeah. Probably just fetch a little bit too aggressively. Okay, so, like, I like bringing those in. I like Maelstrom Pulse. Um, I, I don't think that this game was really indicative of, like, that being particularly powerful. Um, we could bring in more of these guys. Yeah, I'm actually kind of, like, not super stoked about those. And we want Nature's Claims. Um... Yeah, because rest in peace is annoying. So what do we cut for those? Flame Deb's actually really good in this matchup. Um, we can probably cut a life from the loam since we brought in two more dredgers. Um, and then I think I think smallpox is really good in this matchup. Uh I just don't know what else to cut. Maybe Inquisition's not that great, but I like being able to... It's basically spot removal early on, especially on the play. So I'm feeling like I probably cut maybe a Terminate, because those are pretty expensive, um, and maybe a Smallpox. I think that's maybe fine. This is okay. Um, yeah, I'll try this. It's a little slow, but like this brown scale is going to help us out realistically. You got it. I do dislike how that card blanks uh, smallpox. This is fantastic. So now all we have to do is find a um, find a loam, which shouldn't be terrifically challenging. I want to wait until he's got um, until he's got a creature out to play my smallpox. Okay. Initially wanted to pitch Hakan to this uh smallpox. I'm feeling like pitching the brown scale is gonna be better. Mm. We could potentially, you know, we're going to gain some life and uh, have the capacity to um, dredge at least once, which gets us closer to a loam, which, was, which with this hand should virtually win us the game. So I'm a smallpox. And I think we sacrifice this land. Let me pitch brown scale.
And then next turn, we'll just slam our seismic assault down, um, assuming not there's no second Thalia. Otherwise, we get a weighted turn, but that's that's okay. We can deal with that when we get there. Alternatively, we could play our brown scale, um, but I think we're just going to do this. Did not get to our uh, to the car we wanted to hit. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast um, Seismic Assault. All right. And yeah, at this point, uh, we should basically win the game. So we're going to play a land, fetch, get um, an overgrown tomb tapped, cast life in the loam. I'm not 100% on what he can do here that would you know, potentially win in the game. Uh, but what I do know is that we have a lot of lands in hand. I was thinking about uh, smallpox versus um, terminate, and realistically, if he like files and I have to, um, and I try to smallpox, he could like vial in Raven Inspector or whatever, and then his Thalia lives, and then I'm sad. But I think I think that's less important here, and maybe on the play. Let's see, on the play, do we want anything else? I think it's fine. I think. We could potentially bring in like a terminate over brown scale, but I think this is fine. Because like the Bantu's last reckoning is gonna deal with the annoying mass of threats that our opponent likes to put on the board. It doesn't look like it because the past two games we've kept their board under control for the most part. So um Yep, I like this hand. I like this hand. Turn one, either vial every game. Seems good. Cool. So we hit a land. Great. Um, yeah, we're going to fade the sitting. Hit some more lands. Uh, I want to pitch these two, I think. Not particularly interested in having an Urborg right now. And the Ghost Quarters don't do much against my deck, or my opponent's deck. So, Thalia next turn is marginally annoying because it puts me off smallpox by a turn. Thus far, we've been on the play every game. So, if this is a Thalia, okay, it's a smuggler's copter. I don't care that much about that. Um, although, smallpoxing against it is less uh, useful. So, I think we'll just take... Let's start by looting. Just hitting more and more lands. Uh, we'll pitch those. Uh, and we'll play a fetch land. And pass. We could probably pitch a smallpox here, but I um, I think that seismicking things down is going to be less uh, viable than using smallpox to just kill something. You can have your favorite inspector. 
Although maybe not. I mean, seismic assaulting and just shooting things down is actually pretty good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <sighs> okay, that's less... Um, yeah, this is kind of annoying. Um, it's like I can't do any of the things I want to do next turn now. And if I smallpox, this is where, like, Terminate is better than smallpox, because I could just kill the Thalia. Um. I think maybe we hit, uh, Bontus, and that would be great, but. Yeah, like, I'm not really interested in casting the smallpox here, to be honest. Uh. If we were to hit a loam, that's not a loam. Uh, but it's better than what the other options we have, so we'll cast our Inquisition. Yep, take the Wisp, obviously. Um, this, like, this is a close matchup. Thalia is really, really annoying for us. Um, because so now, even if we wanted to kill the Thalia, we would need to top deck another land next turn. So we want to hit a land, so we're actually just going to play our mountain. We could have alternatively just like uh, left up the Bloodstained Mire and not fetched, but then we have to take more damage from a shock because we're, I think we're out of basics. Oops. Yeah, out of basics that are fetchable from Meyer, at least. So yeah, the hope is that we hit a Shockland, or even just like a Ghost Quarter, Quicksand, any untapped land. Basically anything that's not the Jukebox. Bog. Um, we can play and then shoot down the Thalia, and then... Ugh. Yeah, this is. I don't think we're beating this unless we could also top deck a Bantu's Last Reckoning, which would allow us to kill this entire board, and that would be huge. So, yeah, Bantu. I think Bantu's Last Reckoning is actually our best choice. If we could find one of those, we'd be really happy campers. If not, we're just dead. We just die, so. Um, that's kind of something, but it's just, it doesn't really do much. Um, I guess we could play a land and fetch. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight nines. He's got nine damage, so we're dead on board. If we block this or something, we only take one, two, three, four, five, six. Still dead. So we got to fetch. Yeah, we don't have a way of winning this game. Okay, so we're on the draw. And this hand looks pretty good. Um, it doesn't... Like, we don't have a dredger. But if we find one, we can use lava. Like, we can pitch it to lava axe. Or lightning axe. Um, which is great. Uh, and we have two fetches, so our fixing's going to be good. That's okay. So this is going to be much worse than we wanted it to be. Uh, I'm actually just going to fetch, play Faithless Looting. Um, 
Let's see, we want, we have a green source, so we can actually just grab a blood crypt here. Um, okay, sweet. So we want, uh, we want to pitch this and I'm going to pitch nameless inversion. It's not particularly useful against most Tron decks. And then we can go smallpox next turn into ghost quarter the next turn. Eldrazi, wait, uh, it's Eldrazi Tron, so that's good to know. Um... Okay. I'm trying to think of what land I want to pitch. I think it's this one. And then we just sacrifice this one. Maybe pitching those ghost quarter was better, but I think that if we keep him strapped for lands, we're going to be happier campers. And if we didn't, if we could find a life from the loam, that would be great. But Sure. That's not very good for us. Um, yep, I guess we just pass. We pretty aggressively pitched lands, hoping that we'd hit loam. May have been a mistake, but that's okay. Yeah, I think I can concede to that reasonably. Okay, so we want these. I think that these are pretty good in this matchup. And then I like these. I don't like blood ghasts. And this is pretty bad. It doesn't kill very much. Um, I don't know what else is really bad. Maybe the Inquisitions aren't great. Um, yeah, I kind of like Ancient Grudge in this matchup. Go down to one of these guys, bring in two Ancient Grudges. Sure. Uh, this hand doesn't... Wait. No, it does work. This Actually, this is pretty good. Um, I thought that this was a blood grip, so I was like, that's not going to work. The Bloodstained Mire. This are pretty good. So, I'm going to start by catching. And uh, Bloodstained Mire plus Ghost Quarter. Like, Ghost Quartering away his lands is actually pretty relevant in this matchup, so... I'm gonna grab a stomping ground, I think. We have time to cast Takan, like we're not in a rush to get him out. Naturally, we would have been able to about decay him. Had we done, this, done things a little bit differently. But instead, well, I don't think we're in a rush to um, Ghost Quarter's land. So I'm just gonna start Loaming. 
Come on. Yikes. Uh, yeah, we're going to dredge. Because he didn't draw a land. Kind of like just abrupt decaying the. Uh, map here. All right, he concedes to that. Um, let's see. Should we bring in more abrupt or ancient grudges and things? Uh, Inquisition's worse than the draw. Raven's Crime is about the same. Smallpox is a lot worse on the draw, actually. So maybe we cut one of those and add in like an ancient grudge or a nature's claim. Nature's claim is better than uh, grudge sometimes. But he's got chalices that he can play on one and kind of disrupt our game plan. I think this is fine. I think I think overall this configuration is probably pretty good. Okay, this I like this hand a lot. Um, it's got both Seismic and Loam, it's got Maelstrom Pulse, it's got, uh, Lightning Axe plus Loam, so I can kill his, you know, big creatures early. This is a great hand. Um, I'm not in a rush to kill anything, we're just gonna play this tapped. I don't have any fetch lands in this hand, so, like, Seismic Assault... It's going to be a little bit harder to cast than we want to, but we'll get there eventually. We're playing a grindy game plan anyway. All right, well, that's kind of annoying. Okay, here's a fetch, so that's pretty good. We don't want to be thought knotted. Yeah, that sucks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pitch this. We'll go ahead and just draw a card, and then we'll reveal our hand. He's going to take the Seismic Assault. That's just rude. Yeah, he was going to get my loam either way, which kind of sucks. You got it, man. Okay, so we're just going to grab a... Uh, Stomping ground is fine. So, see if we can draw another loam. Nope. So, we'll just play another fetch. Kind of sucks that <laughs> we were so close, so close to getting what we needed. Um, but, that's all right. This is. Tron matchups are really tough for this deck, which seems weird because we have a ton of ghost quarters and a ton of smallpox, but we don't have enough, like, we don't apply a ton of pressure, so if they take the seismic assault and they take our loam, we're pretty screwed. Um, and big threats and things whittle down our life totals pretty quickly, um, and that means that we can't dredge as much as we'd like to, which pushes at a slight disadvantage. Do we have a, we didn't have, this was the lightning axe game, yeah. The last game was the looting game. 
yeah, the last game was not really much of a game, um, but that's you know that's gonna happen every once in a while. Okay, definitely gonna ancient grudge that. See, this way we can cast our seismic if we draw it. Okay, nameless inversion is all right. It's not excellent. I think with it we want this, this plus casting this and discarding a land will actually allow us to kill like a reality smasher. Well, I think if he had Reality Smash, he would have already played it. Goes for... Is he really worried about the kick? No, the quicksand? Sure. He's trying to cut me off of Maelstrom Pulse, but I have three mana. And I'd have green mana anyway. Oh, he's trying to take me off Grudge. He's trying to take me off Grudge. Six. Whoa, that's a lot. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm going to play a fetch here. I want to thin because uh, drawing more lands is not helping my cause here unless I find a uh, ghost quarter. And even then, it's not doing that much for me. So... Okay, smallpox I like. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just play this. It's a pretty slow game. Pretty slow. Smasher, sure. not really keen on playing the Urborg here, and the reason being, um, <clears throat> I don't want to make his dismembers free. Or, like, castable without, you know, dealing damage to himself. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. This is another one. Six. Okay, sure. And bringer, that's fine. Okay, Faithless Looting is great. So, we're going to... I'm going to start by casting smallpox. And I want to fetch, or I want to. S no! That's not good. Fine. Um, I guess now we have to mouse replace this. That sucks. Uh, I did not want to have to do that that way. Um, hmm. Interesting. Here. 
Oh no, I wonder if they run the land that exiles everything. Because they could fit that in. No, okay. That's fine, I'm not particularly worried about that. Just really gotta find like a dredger here. Okay. Sure. Sure. Looting. Okay, at least we found a dredger. And then I think I'm just going to go looting again. We're going to dredge. And draw. And we'll discard. This and this. I think abrupt decay is more useful than, um, yeah. So terminate's great. Terminate's an amazing draw. Uh, so hopefully, he should have Seagate Wreckage's upkeep in a smarter play. Um, yep, it's fine. We just need him to not hit Thought Not Seers. Those are going to be virtually impossible for us to beat. Well, this is fine. We have an Ancient Grudge for that. Um, I went to Brown Scale. Well, that's not ideal. Um... And then we want to terminate this. And yep, we still have not found a loam. Did I sideboard out one? I feel like I did. That could have been a mistake. No, I didn't. Just unlucky. I've seen 28 cards and not seen a single loam. You got it. All right, so he's going to take brown scale. I'll let him rewind on that because uh, I don't know why I'm generous, I guess. Um, let's see if he draws we really need to find like loam and ghost quarter then we can start just winning this game by a lot yeah all right That's kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, we didn't really want to pitch the Montus. Montus is like pretty good here.
Well, that sucks. Um... I still have another terminate, right? Maybe it's better to just draw here. Well, we can also just we can also dredge the brown scale and play it. I kind of like that. We're finally gonna hit a loam now. No, we didn't. Great. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna play this because then we can eat the uh, the thought knots here. And then I'll abrupt decay the uh, relic next turn. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we only have nine lands left in our twenty six cards. Kind of tells you how we've been drawing. Predominantly lands, predominantly brown scales. But it's, I mean, it's worked out okay thus far. Um, yep, that is going to die. Smallpox, that's a good draw. It's a really good draw. Yeah, I'm pretty amped about that draw, actually. X equals three. Sure. <laughs> um, walls. Um, I mean, I guess that technically takes me off of my win cons right now. Technically. It's like it kind of makes it to where uh, decaying this relic is. But he's just going to sack it now, it looks like. Sure. So now I can just decay this. Because this takes me off of, like, because I'm not running blood gas post board, it takes me off of uh, pretty much all my win cons. X equals two, sure. Of course, now we get the loam. Okay. Um, sure. I really don't care about that. I think I care less about the three mana one than I do the two mana one. I think. Here, you can get me for five. Yeah, especially because we got smallpox and we want to be able to loam and all that stuff, so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. This guy. Okay. Um.
Now I have to discard two. We're going to discard the loam. Pass. So, we're hoping to dredge into... We didn't bring in the third dredge, did we? We left it the same. Idiot. Yeah, I think it would have been better to have the third dredge at this point. You know, it's hard to tell, though. I mean, that's... Walls. You do realize I have a loam in the graveyard, right? Like, that I don't care about this at all? Um, people are... People are something. I mean, I could also... Oh, no, I can't do that. Maybe that's why he's trying to do it. I don't know. Well, the Abrupt Decay would have been nice. But it's fine. I can cast the Golgari Brown Scales into this. I just don't have a way of winning now. Right? I have no way of winning the game. Yeah, I'm not very happy about this. Um, maybe we can make him mill himself before we... Sure. Oh yeah, that's that's our other wind cotton. We still have a seismic salt in the deck. But it'd be countered by this, so um Do we we boarded out Flame Jab too, because it sucks against Eldrazi. So we pretty much just have to wait for him to mill himself out, but we're not gonna like We'd have to somehow be able to survive, which we can't do currently. Yeah, so this uh, this was maybe an error on my part. I didn't expect Chalice on three. Chalice usually doesn't come in on three. So, I, you know, Chalice usually comes in on one and two. Um, so that's why I didn't bring in another Grudge or Nature's Claim. Well, that's unfortunate. But that's it doesn't really, that doesn't make much of a difference at this point. Like, yeah, I would need another Abrupt Decay in order to kill the Chalice. Looks like he's getting close to milling out. I, he probably has one more Ballista, though. So, you know. The small box is pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and force him to discard whatever's in his hand. Uh, yeah. Pass the turn. Yeah, small box is almost perfect draw here, so... 
But if he, like, Walking Ballista just kills me. If he runs three, and I think they do. He should do this before, technically. Okay, that's fine. Treetop Village. That's a win con. I can win with Treetop Village. Okay. We have a game plan. So. We are going to... Smallpox. I'm going to get rid of this land, I think. All right? That's fine. And we'll pitch ground scale. Yes. So. Um, yeah, Treetop Village is something with, with which we can win. That's pretty exciting. Um, at this point, like a Raging Ravine would be better, but... Ugh, okay. Oh no, sorry, we saw a loam really early, but it was uh, exiled by Relic. All right. <clears throat> Here we are for the final round. Roll a three, that's pretty pathetic. On the draw here, it looks okay. We have double loam, which is pretty good. Um, brown scale, which is pretty good. So I will keep this because we can dredge pretty aggressively in the. Uh, kind of like turn one looting, but I'd rather see what's in my opponent's hand. Ugh. Um. Well, since we since we're looking to probably dredge into our win cons, I'm gonna take this ensnaring bridge. And I'll pass. And then next turn we probably faithless looting. Yeah, I want to fetch for a foothills, or uh, not a foothills, for a stomping ground next turn. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can name fetch for that. It's kind of annoying. Um, sure. That actually really sucks. Uh, so we need to go faithless looting. Okay, Ghost Quarter's pretty good. We can blow up one of our own lands and then get, uh, get a green source and then we can get close to Seismic Assault. Uh, but we don't have enough, we, like, we need more red mana in order to do that, so. Um, yeah, I still think that we want to dredge. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go ghost quarter. All right, blood gas is gonna come into play. We're gonna blow up our own swamp. After tapping for a black, we get forest, and then we will. Loam back. These lands. Okay. 
sure. So he's probably going to try to start doing this, mechanized production, this, which is, it's pretty medium, if you ask me. Um, it just means that we can't go support him to death, which kind of sucks, but outside of that, if he doesn't hit a blue source and cast that, okay, great, he didn't. Incinering Bridge is fine, I don't really care about that that much, right now at least. Um, yeah, so we can go, I think we can just draw here, we have enough lands, so we just don't really care. Um, I kind of want to go Raven Cairns, cast Faithless Looting. Alternatively, we could just blow up Blue Source, but he's just going to fetch a Blue Source, so that's that would be. Yeah, I think I like playing Faithless Looting to start. Get in for two, see if he pushes. Great, sure. Um, pull Raven Cairns back. And we'll fit this is the second one. Um, draw two. We can pitch Blood St. Meyer since it's dead. And then probably a swamp. No, we want this one. We'll pitch this because, yeah, we have the. Uh, we have the. We want to cast Seismic Assault next turn, so the swamp plus this gives us Seismic Assault. And then. Uh, Normally, we'll go ahead and go. Well, we'll start by attacking. Okay, sure. We can push those all day. I do not care. Get them back. Yeah, this is fine. I think this is fine. Yeah, let's go set this all. All right, sure. And then we'll be. We'll just be pressured to try to find. Uh, a way of killing the mechanized production. You got it. Oh, we could force him to discard with smallpox. That's actually pretty well. But he'll probably take that, knowing that that is the case. The only other option is like faithless looting to try to keep me off drawing cards. All right. That's fine. This actually works out great because I would rather him not have uh mechanized production. So now we can start ghost pouring him too, which is pretty sweet. Um And then we'll go ahead and play our Ghost Quarter, get this guy back, we'll blow up the Seagate Wreckage. And then we'll Loam. Oh wait, did I discard? I didn't discard. Or Sack of Land. Wow. Okay. Um... And then we'll cast Life in the Loam, getting back to Ghost Quarters and a Mountain. Your turn. Sure. Um, So we're going to go loan back three lands. We can actually fetch for a green source and cast the other loam here, 
is pretty sweet. Get you for two, and then I'll get three more lands back. I'll move to my end step and shoot him for two again. Six. So we have him at one, essentially. All right, so against this deck, I love Pulse. I love these guys, they're great. Um, this is probably pretty good. Uh, these are probably pretty good. I just don't think that we're gonna care at all about any of our creature removal. Um, so then aside from those things, does that mean that Hakan's kind of bad? Probably, actually. Um, Smallpox is actually not great on the play either. So we cut all those and then we put in either Memory's Journey or like a Spell Bomb. I kind of like Journey because it protects our stuff a little bit better. Let's try that. Gonna mulligan that hand. This hand's not much better, but wait, I have not kept. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna keep this because if we draw any sort of red or black source, it's an okay hand. It's actually a pretty good hand if we get hit a red or a black source. Preferably like an overgrown tomb, and then we can potentially pulse at some point too. Sure. So my guess is you take Inquisition. Um, so I can't cast the Maelstrom Pulse anyway um, until like a while from now. Yeah. So that's the best target. Great. We hit a Swamp. This is, I mean, that's the downfall of being on the draw and having discard. It's why a lot of people boarded out. The reason that in this matchup I wanted the discard is because um, a control deck forcing us, um, we really need the discard in order to potentially win the game. So I don't know what this is going to be. Can it name? It can't name Graven Cairns, right? Yeah, that's all. Okay, sure. You got it. <clears throat> I guess one downside to uh, not grudging that immediately is that he could potentially thought seize away the grudge and then I have to find a green source in order to kill that Inquisition sure K is an odd one. I mean, I guess he's going to try to counter the Ancient Grudge. Sure. I haven't hit any Dreaders yet. We haven't hit any Faithless Lootings or anything to draw us cards. So, 
kind of just in the waiting game at this point. His journey is not great at this point in the game. It's kind of like I've considered running like steam vents, a singleton steam vents or something like that in the main so that we could fetch for a blue and then be able to cast that. Okay, sure. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to wait until he's a little bit closer to flipping that search before we pitch the bog him. All right, slowly grinding our way through. This is a great draw. Okay, so we're gonna go red, red, cast Faithless Looting. That's a pretty good draw. Um, I'm gonna pitch Memories Journey. And this guy. And then I'm going to just go ahead and eh, I'll just let it fizzle, I think. Yeah, we can wait a little bit longer. We can wait one more turn. We'll we'll bog him next turn. <clears throat> Ooh, an Urborg. That's exciting. Oh no! Alright. You have ruined my forces. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, we can just draw here. Go ahead and cast our guy. And then we'll bog you. Okay. I'm going to attempt to kill that. Unless I pay three. Sure, you got it. I'm just gonna grab a basic forest here. Um, and we'll fill it again. And we'll get in for three. <coughs> We have Pulse for the next thing that he tries to do. We could have also Raven's Crime first, but I, I value the Raven's Crime in my hand right now since uh, retracing it would cost me a land, which uh, makes it just a little bit slower. So, but we have a um, pretty good shot here, I think. Wait, what? Uh, okay, he played it so that it would... Got it. Okay. Draw. We could like we could feasibly Maelstrom pulse this, or we could just shuffle things in from his graveyard. So I'm gonna start by um, casting Faithless Looting. This is pretty good. Loam and a mountain. Again for three. And then we want to shuffle in like as many useless things as we can. So we're gonna go ahead and cast Memories Journey 
Um, So yeah, that way he's more likely to draw useless things. And then, uh, yeah, we should have, well, we should have played this, but that's okay. Um, we should have lethal in the next two turns. So that's kind of where we're looking. Our timeline, if we, sure. He's gonna take pulse, I'm guessing. Yep. And then for me, I want to dredge here because I, it puts me more likely to hit a Bloodgast. Didn't get there, but that's okay. Um, go ahead and get in for three. And then I think we... There's no point in ghost courting anything of his, so. I think what I actually do is I go ahead and play a brown scale so that if he has removal for the um, scourge, then I can still win. What was it that was so valuable that he just wanted to draw it? Jace. Okay. He's got to hit like Bontus or something off the top. Or ensnaring bridge. I suppose you could hit a bridge and then uh, that would kind of suck. But he didn't, so we win. Okay, so we finish three and two uh, despite some misplays, particularly in the Jund matchup. Um, but I think that the deck overall is really powerful. Um, it uh, beats some of the key decks in modern, such as um, Jund or Jeskai Control, uh, because it's able to um, slowly outgrind them. Um, I think in terms of cards I'd like to consider, Sweltering Suns is one that I kind of like a fair bit. Um, a Tectonic Edge somewhere in the 75 would be pretty great. Um, so that you're not still feeding your opponent cards or thinning their library at a certain point. Um, I think uh, potentially a surgical extraction or extirpate type effect would be pretty good so that you can just turn off Tron lands, because Tron is actually a pretty tough matchup. Um, so there are definitely some options in terms of things that you can play around with the sideboard in terms of your meta. Uh, but I think overall this shell is really powerful. I really like the Hawk and Strom Gold Scourge package uh, as opposed to other packages I've tried, which have included Young Pyromancer and Lingering Souls, both of which are fine. Um, but I really like the uh, Strom Gold Scourge. Um, and so, yeah, I will be releasing more videos of Pox Loam if you guys are interested and Mono Green Stompy. So check in next time, and I will see you then.